has Microsoft Cloud App Security, the conditional access is at the root. So any, who runs Azure Active Directory? On-prem Active Directory? Probably, okay, between the two. Um, and so as you move into the cloud, the conditional access becomes, gets stronger and stronger. Unless you're running something like, say, Duo or Okta, where you do get that conditional access. And those will integrate here. For today, I'm going to show you Microsoft's conditional access, but you could insert your, uh, if you're running RSA, Okta, Duo, uh, Ping, one of those. So I'm not much on slides. So let's go take a look at Microsoft's conditional access. And can you read that OK? OK, in the front, probably, probably ends there, right? So if you want to see it, you can move up. And so here I've built several conditional access policies. So let me talk about conditional access first. It says, if someone's knocking on my door, will I let them in? So let me give you some examples here. Uh, you'll see one is we have multi-factor for our employees. It says, if you're an employee, you're, we're going to require multi-factor and you can access these applications. This is out of the box. This is an Azure P1 license, right? So the cheapest, basically, that you pay for. But we say for guest users, if you're a guest user, you can only log in from the US. And by the way, you still have to multi-factor. Right? So they get to use their Microsoft, whatever account they're in, and then we lay our multi-factor on top of it. And that's the way that Azure multi-factor. It's a great big easy button in Azure. Another couple of examples here. Let me just open one up and I'll show you. So we have one here that says block suspect countries. So what we've done here is we've, I've created a location. You can see here, name locations. And we have a couple of here. Uh, one is our Google IP in Huntsville. The other one is our Azure tenants. And we've marked them as trusted IPs. And then we've also come in and we've built a suspect countries list. There is 189 selected items. Um, and of course, we have Nigeria. I feel bad for the people that are trying to do legit business in Nigeria. That has to be really frustrating. Uh, you have to VPN to France or somewhere. And so you can see in our world, these are countries we don't do business, customers don't do business, I, have, I don't want to see traffic from. So at the, at the very beginning, I don't want to have to block something with a firewall or with M, a CASB if I just don't even allow the traffic to begin with. So in the very beginning, we have a rule that looks like this. And I'll walk you through kind of the, the uh, how to do the conditional access. And I'm in Azure. So if you have Azure, this is how it works. As you can see here, we have, uh, a, a, it'll come up, it'd be all users. We could, though, have come in and create a policy for specific groups of users. We're not going to do that. And you can see here, I have all my cloud apps. I could come in and select apps individually. So for example, I could come into here and pick out Teams, I could come in and pick out, say, 365 Mail, SharePoint Online, Delve, and any of the Azure apps that we've installed in our tenant. Uh, whether you're in Azure Gov or whether you're in, this is an Azure Gov and Azure Commercial both, so there's no difference in, in this part of it. And then we could select those, and we're writing a policy per team. And, uh, you know, think about the uh, application of this. We could have a custom app. Say it's uh, just for the executive team, for example, that we limit that only executive team and only from maybe even specific IP addresses, their houses in our office. I am sure. And then we have the conditions. Now we have four different conditions. So this is kind of conditional access 101. And uh, you can configure sign-on risk. I'm not going to do that. We could limit whether it's iOS or Windows Phone. So it, it understands device type. Uh, and here we go into locations. Remember, I, I built that list of suspect countries. So now what we have is a policy that says, hey, if you're in a suspect country, then what we're going to do is come down to the access controls, and we're just going to block access. I want to show you this before I get too deep into the MCAS stack, because the best, the best place to stop them is before they even get to the front gate. Don't even let them get knocking on the network. Stop them here. So if that traffic's coming in from a suspect country, we drop that traffic. 
They don't, we, they don't log in. We don't see the traffic. We don't see anything. 